Welcome to your online coffee break, where we discuss bite-sized topics that inspire, educate, and entertain. Here's your host, a software innovator, award-winning marketer, and astronomy and space buff, Chuck Fields. Hello, thanks for joining me today for your online coffee break. Today, I'm pleased to introduce my special guest, Fee Waybill. Since 1972, Fee has been the lead singer of the legendary rock band, The Tubes, and was a driving force behind the classic rock hits, She's a Beauty and Talk to You Later. Fee recently released a brand new solo album called Fee Waybill Rides Again. The album was produced and co-written by the multi-talented Richard Marks and includes contributions from Chris Daltrey, Nickelback's Chad Kroger, and drummer Josh Freeze. Seven years in the making, Fee's incredible new album debuted in the top 10 on Amazon's new rock releases chart. Online Coffee Break. Hi, Chuck. Fee Waybill. Fee is an honor. Thanks so much for joining me today. Really appreciate it. Oh, no problem, man. It's, yeah, I appreciate your, you taking your time. I tell you, I'm loving your new album, Fee Waybill Rides Again. Even love the title. It's awesome. <laughs> That used to be a that used to, that was the title of an old western, Destry rides again, <laughs> and uh, I just love you know I grew up in Arizona watching those old westerns and those you know western series like you know Wanted Dead or Alive with Steve McQueen <laughs> and and uh, you know the 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 Lawman and Rifleman oh, and yeah, you know all good classics those yeah, are all great classics. Hey, Fee, I want to congratulate you. I mean, your album debuted in the top 10 on Amazon's new release chart. Doesn't surprise me because I think all the songs are amazing. I just want to say congratulations for that and just asking, you know, how's it feel to you sort of hit the ground running with your new album? Boy, I mean, I'm, I'm, kind, of, I'm kind of stunned with this, you know, myself. I, I'm so thrilled with the response. You know, it's been incredible. And, uh, you know, I had no idea. I, I, I didn't <laughs> plan, you know, this this timing or anything like this yeah. of course i didn't plan the pandemic you know <laughs> Good. But, glad to hear you didn't plan it for you <laughs> no i didn't plan it i mean and we finished the record early in uh january february we finished it uh, i'm just so thankful that you know i can't imagine trying to do this now oh, you know, know getting in the studio and trying to get people together and social distancing and what try to see sing, sing your lead vocal but you have to wear a mask yeah, that's yeah. insane. You know, I don't think so. I tell you, though, the timing is great. I'm so glad that you, that you got that done before all this hit in. I, I did want to take a step back before we dive into your new album, if I may. You know, of course, you know, you became lead singer of the Tubes way back in 1972. And uh-huh. of course, since then, you know, minus is familiar, you've had several incredible hits, including, you know, Talk to You Later, which hit number seven on the U.S. rock charts. And of course, the number one single, She's a Beauty. I was just wondering if you could. Let's go back. I want to hear how you first became interested in music and how the tubes came about. Can you share that story? I was always interested in music. My mother was a singer. And oh. before she got married, when she grew up in Omaha, Nebraska, she was a singer and she was so good that she used to sing with big bands that came to town. Oh, nice. You know, I guess back then when a big band would travel, they didn't care. They, you know, they carried as few people as possible because they're, well, I don't know, on a train or something, you know. <laughs> yeah. And they used to pick up singers in each city they would play in. And in the, in Omaha, my mom was the one. They were they were the one, and she was like eighteen, twenty years old, and she sang with Duke Ellington. Oh wow! And you know, she that was her gig. She loved singing, and then you know she got married and she had kids and she stopped all that and they moved to scottsdale arizona where i grew up but there was always music in our house always we had a great big one of those gigantic rca wooden record players you oh, know yeah. mm-hmm. and uh we played music all the time we you know we played so much music you know, and we were singing all the time. You know, my dad instituted a rule, no singing at the dinner table really? <laughs> because we were always singing. And my my brother and my brother didn't really catch the bug like I did mm-hmm. or my sister, but I just all I wanted to do was sing. And I love music and I when I went to high school I got into the choir and I was a singer in the choir, and when the Beatles came out, I went completely insane yeah, like and learned all of their songs and would sing Beatles songs all the time. And 
you know, I got into the theater arts department and I started doing musical comedy. So I'm, oh, really? I, I'm a, I knew how to sing and I'm doing, you know, Oklahoma and Camelot and <laughs> Music Man and wow. Little wow. Abner and all these plays. We had a great, great theater department in uh, Scottsdale High. Now, you've had this incredible career. I mean, and you've also met some great work with some great talent over the years. You know, there's Kenny Loggins, Toto, the Foo Fighters and Richard Marks. Now, I understand that Richard Marks actually encouraged you to create your new album and produced it. I was wondering if you could just tell us more about how your new album came to life. What was the story behind that? Well, it was a a long journey. Uh, Richard, we've written songs for years together. And uh, back when he first became an artist in 89, he always always liked my lyrics, and we wrote songs together. And... uh, and we wrote this one song in like 2013. It's been seven years since we yeah. started this. In 2013, we wrote Faker. And he said, oh, my God. And, and we recorded it at a studio up in Chicago. And he said, man, this is, great. This is such a great rock song. And he goes, we should do a record. I said, oh, okay, let's do a record. And I hadn't, you know, my previous solo record was in 96 which I also wrote or, or did with Richard and a guy named Bruce Geich. And I said, well, yeah, it's only been like 17 years since I did a record. So, yeah, let's do it. And so we started with that, and uh, we recorded three other songs in early in that, in that time period, around th- 2013, 14, 15. We, yeah. re- we, we did uh, Promised Land, Woulda, Coulda, Shoulda, and How Dare You, we did back then. Okay. So we had four songs in the can. And then the whole thing fell apart. And then, you know, everything, whatever, you know, I went on the road with the band, I broke up with my girlfriend, Richard got a divorce, moved to to California, and, uh, you know, everything kind of got put on hold. And over the years, we kept saying, oh, let's go, let's go. Every, every once in a while, Richard would call me up and say, we got to get back to doing this. I went, yeah, okay, I'm ready. And then, you know, it would be another year before he asked me again. <laughs> oh, man. And uh, so finally, about a year, maybe a year and a half ago or so, he said, well, you know, this is, let's just finish this. Okay, we have, we have four tracks. Let's just finish it. I said, okay, let's do it. And... He goes, well, let's, let's think about songs. And I said, okay. Well, there was two songs that he had written. One song called Say Goodbye, which I wrote the lyrics for, and he never did. It was, I wrote it for him, and he never put it on a record. And it kept getting pushed off to the next record and then the next record. And then I, I said, Richard, this song is so great, and every time I hear it, I want to cry. It's, it's, I love this song. Mm-hmm. He goes, okay, well, you know sing it let's do this nice. so you know we erased erased his vocal and we stuck my vocal on it and then the other one was still you on the inside yeah which was that song he wrote i didn't have anything to do with it he wrote that song with chad kroger from nickelback and he wrote it for daughtry and daughtry didn't want to do it and he sent me the record and the sent me the song and I thought, I said, man, this is such a great song. My God, this could be like a number one country song. This is so cool. And Chad had a, you know, he sent me Chad's vo- version of it, and it was brilliant. And and he said, well, they're not going to do it. And, and then Richard did a version of it on, on as a bonus track with Richard singing it. And I said, man, I want to do this one. Let's, can I do this song also? He goes, yeah, sure, okay. We'll do that. We'll do, we'll. He goes, you know, it's really high. I said, oh, I can do it. And I said, okay. He said, okay. Oh. And so he took his vocal off of that, and we went in the studio and put up my vocal on. See, and it turned out great. Fia, that is a great song. So you on this side, that was one thing I, I was going to ask you about, because it's like, for our listeners out there, it's a great crossover country hit. I mean, it's just fantastic. And one thing I, I want to say, Fee, is what I love, I think you and I have this in common, is I love records with lots of variety. And, and you know, your album certainly has that. And I think yeah, well, every track you. on this album has its own, you know, unique story. And you, know, you mentioned still, you know, on the inside, you also talked about Faker. But I understand, and I love Faker. I love both these songs. Um, I understand you wanted the song Faker to be sort of the cornerstone of the album. Tell us more about that. that well, yeah, because that's because we wanted to do a, a rock and roll, a guitar-driven rock and roll record, 
And I mean, who does that anymore? Only the Foo Fighters is about the only one I know. And and even the Foo Fighters, you know, uh, even though Dave is so great, and you know, I got to actually sing background vocals on one of their records, and we've been friends forever. But they don't have a lot of guitar solo stuff. I mean, they're they're ridiculously great, but but we just wanted like a guitar solo driven album, and it just you know a classic rock album, and they just you know, there, there just aren't any of them anymore, and uh, so that kind of started the idea, and uh, and then it's funny that the 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 track that kind of follows up on that is the don't want to pull the trigger, you know, was another track that Richard texted me that demo. And he was saying, I really, you know, I can't, I can't play the lead guitar part, you know, and he was playing it on an acoustic guitar, playing the rhythm, and, and he goes, you know, and like, like the, little, the little demo lead into the song is, he goes, and he's kind of singing what the lead guitar part would be. And, yep. uh, and it's so cool, and actually Elizabeth, my wife, said, oh my God, that's so great. He goes, why don't, why don't you try to meld that into the actual song? It was her idea. Oh, it turned out great. <laughs> and I just went, wow, okay. And I asked Richard, he goes, okay, well, Matt, Matt well, okay. Matt, we'll, we'll have Matt, the, a, a guy named Matt Prock is a young engineer from Chicago that mixed the record and, and mastered the record. And he is a brilliant, a brilliant guy. And we said, Matt, can you figure out how to make this text demo lead into the actual recording of this? He goes, okay, let me work on it. And he's the one that pulled it off, and, and even in the same key and everything. And it, yeah, it turned out great. <laughs> and that's like a guitar-driven rock song, and uh, and that was one that actually Richard suggested that title, "Don't Pull the Trigger." Yeah. And that was a line I had used in an earlier song in "Woulda, Coulda, Shoulda." I used that line, and and he goes, "I don't care, you know. It's this is a, do it." Most of my so- I don't really write happy songs that aren't like either sarcastic or, <laughs> you know, or tongue-in-cheek or, yeah. I don't know. Elton, yeah. John, El- Elton John once said that uh, melancholy, melancholy was better. He said melancholy songs are better than happy songs. Well, I tell you, well, you're, you're just on a, you're a great songwriter. And, you know, you mentioned poetry. And I understand, you know, you also write poetry. In fact, you're working on your second book of poetry, I think. Yeah. And tell us more yeah, about I that. Have a, I, I have one book. I wrote one book, and that was a book about about me wanting to get back together with my wife and feeling lonely and sitting in my apartment in Venice, you know, late at night, you know, drinking and, you know, feeling sorry for myself and writing poems. And then I would send her the poems, and, you know, actually, she... She, it, it worked. I was going to say it worked because you got married again. <laughs> it That's worked. awesome. We got back together. <laughs> so I'm working on another one. It's it's not quite so melancholy. It's kind of more storylines. You know, last question. You know, what, what's coming up? What's next for you in the tubes? What's after this? Well, good question. You know, uh, I don't want to go out social distancing. I don't want to do streaming. I don't want to. I don't want to play at a drive-in with people sitting in their car with a little speaker hanging over their window. I don't want to do it. I, I mean, I, I, if, if they can figure this out, we'll be the first one out there, man. The tubes will be back. I guarantee you. I want to, I want to do some solo shows, too. That would be awesome to see you back out on the road again. It would be awesome. Well, it'll happen. I know it'll happen. Well, we can't wait. Well, Fee, hey, I want to just thank you for this awesome album, Fee Waybill Rides Again. Again, audience, check it out. And Fee, thank you so much. It's been an honor speaking with you, Fee. Well, Chuck, thank you for having me. I appreciate it, man, okay? You All stay right. safe out there. Online Coffee Break. Well, I really enjoyed my conversation with Fee today, and I'm loving his new album, Fee Waybill Rides Again. Highly encourage you to check it out. If you'd like to learn more, just go to thetubes.com. I want to thank Fee for joining me today. I want to thank you for joining us as well. Again, we'd appreciate it if you'd share this episode with a friend. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, if you can use a thumbs up, we'd appreciate it. Or if you're listening, just give us a great rating on your favorite podcast application. We certainly appreciate it. Either way, thanks so much for joining us today. We'll see you next time. God bless.